Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today, you saw the title, I've got a huge haul for you guys. When I say huge, I mean, I'm looking at two of the biggest stacks of books I have ever seen in my life. I got most of these books for my birthday and a few as congratulations gifts for me and Cameron's engagement. And then I also got a few books for myself with birthday money or just because I was trying to do self-care for my birthday. And my self-care is 1000% buying books. Also, I got these little teeny tiny boba earrings um I'm literally obsessed with that if you don't know I love boba so much that I named my little dog boba so this is boba look I'm wearing you on my ears girl so I'm very excited to go ahead and get into this haul let's go ahead and jump right into it so these first couple books were sent to me by one of my very good friends Matt from Matt the Page Turner here on booktube sent me two books by A.R. Torre, our queen that we are both obsessed with. And I read The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torre and ever since then I've just been hooked. And Matt felt the same way. So he sent me the sequel to The Girl in 6E, which is Do Not Disturb. This is following the aftermath of The Girl in 6E. So if you don't know what that's about, uh, we are following a character who is a cam girl and she lives in her apartment locked in and the back says the rules are don't leave the apartment never let anyone in and don't kill anyone the rules were simple and i broke them now i must face the consequences everyone else must face me so obviously i'm not going to spoil the end of the girl in 6e but we know that she broke her rules and now there are other people in her life and we're going to see how she deals with that if she kills them I'm very excited for this one. And Matt also sent A.R. Tori's new release, which is Every Last Secret. I'm actually only 80 pages from finishing this book right now, and it is so good. Also, whenever I read books that are sent to me, I use y'all's little notes that you send as the bookmark because I just like to see it and feel the love and read the sweet little things you guys write for me. So I really appreciate those sweet little notes and I keep all of them just so you know. But I am. I am super close to finishing this book and I am loving it. I'm flying through it. It's so good. Honestly, I didn't even want to film this all right now because I just wanted to sit around and read this book. It is so good. It's a bitch I'm gonna snatch your life story and y'all know I love that. We are following Nina who is like this up and coming girl. She's from kind of a rough childhood but she has grinded and worked her way up to become the suburban rich designer bag toting queen that we all want to be except she is on a mission to steal this man, this very wealthy billionaire from this company that she works at from his wife. And we're also following the wife who is named Kat and she is just as perfect as can be on the outside. Nina sees this very perfect exterior, but nobody knows that Kat is really insecure and really struggling in her security in her marriage, struggling with infertility. So it's a really interesting dynamic to follow Nina the underdog who you're supposed to be rooting for but also follow Kat who's supposed to be kind of the villain but you're feeling a lot more sympathy for her and you almost don't want the underdog to win so it's very conflicting it has a lot of like moral dilemmas in it I'm loving it I really highly recommend it at least so far I haven't gotten to the ending but just based on the first 220 pages I highly recommend and following up with yet another AR Torre book I have if you dare this is the third book in the girl in 6e trilogy so I figured since Matt so kindly sent me the sequel I would pick up the third book and do a reading vlog next month reading the two of these let me know if that's something you guys would want to see obviously if you haven't read the first one it wouldn't really apply to you and I think I would do a spoiler vlog on this one because it's so hard to talk about thrillers in a reading vlog without telling you guys 
what happens. I don't know if you guys like spoiler vlogs. Let me know down below in the comments. I won't do it if you don't like it. Be honest, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But yeah, I have both of these books now and I'm super excited to read them. If you don't want a reading vlog, then I'll just read them for myself, totally fine. Next up are another couple books that I just picked up for myself. They have been sitting in my Amazon cart and I just finally clicked buy. So the first one of those is The Twin by Natasha Preston. This is a YA thriller that follows two twins, Iris and Ivy, and they were actually separated during their parents' divorce when they were super young. So the dad got one twin, the mom got the other, and they were estranged their whole life. But the mom has unfortunately gotten in a tragic accident and now the dad has to take care of both of the twins so they're reunited for the first time and one of them starts acting really weird so it sounds like a good time i've heard good things about this one from carol from carol t reads so i have high hopes for this one and i also got another natasha preston this is the lost and it's another YA thriller. This one I heard good things about from Jacqueline here on booktube. And she said this one was really dark and graphic, like a horror movie, and that is my shit. So I'm hoping this one's really good. I know it follows like a kidnapped group of teens uh, who have to like play a game, kind of like Saw vibes, like they're all trapped in a room together. They have to do certain things or play certain games to get out of their captor's grasp. Next up, I have The Siren, and this one was actually gifted to me off my Amazon wishlist for my birthday, but there wasn't a note, so let me know if you sent this down below and I will thank you, but this one sounds super fun and super summery. Also, can we just appreciate this cover? I love it. It is beautiful, and I actually heard about this one from Olivia Reads a Latte, which is why I added it to my Amazon wishlist, and she said it's like very rich people murder mystery vibes like opulent summertime yacht scenario but somebody ends up dead and i'm all for that next i'll just go ahead and show you guys what i got for this month's book of the month so my book of the month this month i chose the maidens by alex michaelides and I absolutely love The Silent Patient, so I was super excited for this new release from him. And I know that this is like a super psychological thriller that takes place on a college campus. It's very dark academia vibes, so I really do wanna to get to this one, but I will probably save it for fall. It just seems like such a fall book. I would love to do a fall aesthetic reading vlog with some of these more dark academia style thrillers. And for my birthday month, Book of the Month gave me a free add-on. So I got The Mothers by Britt Bennett and my mom and I were just laying out by the pool and she was reading The Vanishing Half, which reminded me how much I freaking love Britt Bennett's writing. So that's why I decided to pick up The Mothers and I think this follows a mother. It says The Mothers is a book about community, ambition, love, and friendship and living up to expectation in contemporary black America. It begins with a secret and follows that secret through the lives of three different characters from high school to adulthood, tracing its impact far beyond their Southern California youth. So I know this book focuses on mother-daughter relationships and just female relationships in general. And there's also a lot of discussion around race in contemporary America. So I think this will be another hit from Britt Bennett. I'm very excited to get to this one. Next, I will talk about a book that y'all are probably sick of hearing about because I've talked about it in like three videos. But one of my real life besties, <laughs> not she's not on booktube, but we love her. Her name's Bailey. She got me Ship of Theseus slash S by J.J. Abrams. So this is like a House of Leaves situation where it's a book within a book. Ship of Theseus is a mystery book. And then within the book, there is there are all of these little clues and footnotes so we can... Um, find out who the author is of this book. So V.M. Straka is a pen name and J.J. Abrams wrote S to try to figure out who the pen name actually is. And it's a mystery within a mystery. 
I'm buddy reading it with two of my friends in real life and I am so freaking excited about it. Next up we have With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo and I'm actually reading this book in a reading vlog this month so I went ahead and ordered it. I got this super cheap on Amazon. I think I like accidentally ordered it on like Amazon Day or something, Prime Day. I don't know what it was but this book was literally eight dollars and I was like blown away because it's so beautiful. Like, hello? This book is gorgeous. Absolutely so pretty. And I already know I'm gonna love it because I'm obsessed with Elizabeth Acevedo's writing. She writes all of her stories in verse, so it's not only impactful, but absolutely beautiful writing. And I'm not gonna spoil what reading vlog this book is for because it's a secret TBR and I'm excited. Next up, I picked up a couple Chuck Palahniuk books from my local Half Price Books because we all need a self-care trip to Half Price Books every once in a while. So I got Survivor and this follows the last survivor of a death cult as he is like going down in an airplane like crash boom like on the way down like he knows he's gonna die and he's telling his life story everything that happened in this cult and trying to like preserve that story i don't know how it's gonna go but chuck palanek is a weirdo and sometimes i like a weird book i also got lullaby by chuck palanek and i got this copy because like some angsty teen wrote all over it and i just think that is the vibe that i want for all of my used books like <laughs> i hope this touches me the way that it touched this person um who wrote a lot of like angsty shit on the cover of this book and Lullaby follows this guy who is basically running across the country trying to destroy this ancient poem or lullaby that when you read it, it kills you or you die or something happens. And that just sounds very entertaining. I know that it's gonna be, like I said with the other one, weird as shit. Also, I'm just now realizing this this entire book is annotated by the same angsty child who wrote on the front. So this is just gonna be a wonderful character study for me, not only about the book, but about the person who owned this before me. Y'all, this is why I love used books. I love loved books. Like, ooh, I, I just wanna know who has gotten like my copy of 1984 that I had in high school and I wrote like very angsty things all over. I just wanna know what they think of me and if they feel connected to me um, moving on. Next up, we have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, and I am so excited to get to this book. It has been recommended to me just constantly on booktube anytime anyone hears about my taste they're like have you read this book and i'm happy to say that i am about to and i love grady hendrix writing and i've heard that this one's super summery and i love summery horror and i love the look on people's faces when they see me at the pool and they see me reading like a horror book that just like that's the feeling, that is the vibe that I'm looking for. So I'm so excited to get to this. And this was sent to me by Jay. So Jay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to get to it. Oh my God. This follows two best friends in the 80s. And one of them starts acting really weird. So I think the other tries to perform an exorcism on her. Sounds wonderful. And also from Jay, oh my God, wait, are all of these? Are all of these from Jay? Oh my God, you sent me so many books. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, these two are also from Jay. The first one is The Housewarming by S.E. Lines. And I read this in a reading vlog unexpectedly, like really long time ago. I will link it um, if I can find which reading vlog I read this in, but I had an e-arc of this book, uh, The Housewarming, and I just randomly read it to try to get myself out of a slump in the middle of a reading vlog. And I, freaking loved it. I fell in love with it and I really wanted the final physical copy. So thank you so much for gifting it to me, Jay. And she also sent 
Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. This is Mary Kubica's newest release. And it follows a girl who was kidnapped many years ago. I think it's like 15 years ago or something. And then she comes back and gets to share what happened to her or not. And I think more people are going missing in the present day. So I love stories about missing women. I love when they come back and they stick it to their captor. So I'm really hoping that that is what this is. And to go along with that in a future reading vlog, I actually recently picked up from a little free library, Pretty Baby by Mary Kubica. And I'm so excited to read both of these and the other misses in a Mary Kubica dedicated reading vlog, hopefully in the next couple months. All right, this next book, if I'm being totally honest, was my birthday gift to myself that I ordered in March. As soon as this book was available for pre-order, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna do it, girl, because I literally want it on release day and I'm gonna pay the $28 <laughs> to pre-order it and get it shipped to me and that's just gonna be my birthday present because Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid came out on my birthday and it was so fun to see it on my doorstep on my birthday and I'm super excited to read this one. Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors ever and this story is a historical fiction that takes place in 1983 and it is also a family drama following one of the side characters Characters from the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Mick Riva, and all of his children. It's like a family drama. There's some romance. There's some mystery. And this entire book takes place on one night. So I know it's going to be super fast paced and just be a whirlwind of emotion and love and crazy twists. And I'm so ready for it. I want to read it right now. While I was home visiting my family for my birthday, we ended up going to Barnes and Noble so I could spend some of that birthday money. So the next few books I picked up from there the first one I got is The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. This follows a psychotherapist who writes in a journal about his life and then just leaves it in a cafe. And then somebody else comes and picks it up and writes in it and then leaves it in the cafe and then like a next person, a next person, a next person. And I'm just like, what is that? Like, what if that happened in real life? Like, I'm just, I just want to know what happens. I think it's supposed to be like, funny and eccentric but also like heartwarming and emotional and i'm always down for a sweet contemporary like that i also got he started it by samantha downing i really enjoyed my lovely wife by samantha downing so i'm hoping that i'm gonna enjoy this one as well it follows two siblings who are on a road trip together to collect their inheritance after someone in their family has passed away and i think they are also trying to kill each other question mark so one of them can like capitalize more on the inheritance. I don't know, sounds murdery, sounds thrillery. I love Samantha Downing's writing in the first book that I read by her. And I think I might save this for when For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing comes out because I've pre-ordered that one and I really wanna do a Samantha Downing dedicated reading vlog as well. Next up from Barnes & Noble, I got Archer's Voice. And I, this book was only $6 on clearance. I could not believe it. Um, but this is an emotional romance. I got this recommendation from Steph here on BookTube. I'm actually going to link her channel because I've become obsessed with her channel recently. She has no idea who I am. It's not like we're friends or anything. I'm just a lurker and I watch all her videos. So, um... If you go watch her channel, leave her a comment and let, let her know that I sent you because I'm obsessed with her and I just want to be her best friend. But she has some amazing indie romance recommendations and I was super excited to find this one that she loves on clearance at Barnes & Noble. An emotional romance that follows two people who have experienced a lot, a lot of trauma. I think our female love interest is moving to a town to like kind of start over and leave things in the past. But then she meets Archer and it unlocks her soul. She's triggered, but she's in love, but she's mad at him, but she wants him. But like, you know, it's just gonna be a whole journey, so. 
excited for this one. And the last thing I picked up from Barnes & Noble on that trip was We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. I am just simply obsessed with Grady Hendrix, y'all, so I had to pick this one up. I think it is like satirical horror about the music industry, and I am so ready for that. It's also a historical fiction set in the 1990s, which I love anything set in that time period. And hello, this cover. I can't get over it. I am obsessed with Grady Hendrix. I want to be his friend. I want to talk with him about horror and the genre in general. And I, I just love it. I just love everything that he writes, everything that he does. Let me know if you would want a Grady Hendrix vlog as well. I could read um, My Best Friend's Exorcism and We Sold Our Souls in the same video. Would you like that? Let me know down below. Next up, we have The Cabin at the End of the... Whoa! Falling notes. We have The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. And this was kindly sent to me by Angelia from At Angelia's Hobbies. She's always on the live. She always has some hot takes about books. So thank you so much, Queen, for sending me this book. I'm super excited to read this during summer ween. This is a horror book that follows a gay couple and their child as they go on vacation in this cute little cabin and weird shit starts happening. It's like a survival horror kind of situation. And I love that. Like. Give me the weirdness, give me the bird box vibes, give me the on the edge of my seat, something's breaking down the door vibes. I cannot wait for Summerween, y'all, especially with all this horror. Y'all know it's about to go down. Next up, we have Marlena by Julia Bunsen, and this was gifted to me by Arlie, one of my friends in my grad school program. She's also one of my bridesmaids, so thank you so much, Arlie. This story follows Kat, who is 15, and she's just kind of a bored gal trying to survive in rural Midwestern America, I think. And um, she ends up meeting this bubbly, vibrant, crazy gal named Marlena who helps her come out of her shell and live life to the fullest. And then in a tragic accident, Marlena passes away. So it's about Kat trying to process that grief. And then I think we have a perspective uh, from decades after that event when she is still haunted by this ghost of Marlena and missing her and wishing that she was here to kind of help her come out of her shell again as an adult. So I think this is going to be very poignant and beautiful. It's giving me like lovely bones vibes like creepy murdery but also commentary on like toxic friendships we love to see it next up we have one true loves by taylor jenkins reed i'm reading this one for romanceathon so i just went ahead and ordered it on good old amazon thanks jeff for the book i don't want to give you money but it's so fucking convenient anyway this book follows a woman who is with her high school sweetheart she is loving him living with him having the best time they have a wonderful marriage and then they go on vacation together and he passes away unfortunately so she goes back home she's grieving she's trying to get over it and she eventually does and meets a new man and soon after after her husband who she thought had passed away wakes up and is like hey did you forget about me oh you tried to move on what about me so she's trying to figure out who her one true love actually is i'm so excited to read this during romance-a-thon i'm sure you'll see it in my vlog so get ready for it oh i can also show you guys my may book of the month picks because i have not hauled those on my channel yet so as my book of the month pick for May, I got How Lucky by Will Leach. Lech? Hmm? And I haven't heard anyone talk about this book. And I don't think anyone else I know picked this as their book of the month, but it just sounded the most interesting to me. So I picked it up. It is a mystery with some disability rep in it. We follow a character who actually cannot speak or move. He is bound to a wheelchair because of a disease that he's had since he was a small child. And he just kind of sits at his window and watches 
the commuters walk by his house every day and there's one particular woman that he watches and one day he is convinced that he witnesses her kidnapping so i don't know what he's trying to do if he turns into a detective i don't know how he would tell someone what he saw but it sounds exciting. It sounds very heartwarming. You know, hearing about someone's resilience and strength through having a debilitating physical disability their entire life. I am super excited for more disability rep and hopefully a fun mystery. And I actually added another add-on uh, in May as well. I got The Death of Vivek OG because Jess will not shut up about this book. So I just went ahead and did it. And she says it's gonna destroy me and make me cry. And I'm just kind of ready for that. I'm looking for something to make me cry and make me feel something. So maybe this will be the one. I trust you Jess, so I'm pretty sure it will be. Oh, and speaking of Jess, for my birthday, Jess from Books Past Bedtime, one of my besties and another one of my bridesmaids, <laughs> sent me They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. And this follows a female serial killer on a university campus. And I think she takes out men that she wants to like get revenge on. Maybe they have like sexually assaulted someone. Maybe they're like gross professors that flirt with their female students. Whatever it is, she will take these men out. And I've heard amazing things about this one. So again, I'm super excited to get to it. I will probably read this one for Summerween as well. All right, we're getting to the end of the stack here. We're almost done, I promise. Next up, we have Where the Grass is Green and the Girls Are Pretty by Lauren Weisberger. I talked about this one in my May wrap up. So I will link it above and below if you want to hear my full in-depth thoughts about it. Cameron and I were walking through Costco when I said, um, oh, I, that book looks good. I really wanna read it. And he was like, oh, it's almost your birthday. Let me get it for you, so. That's how I acquired this beauty and I'm happy to say she worked out and I liked it. So for full thoughts, again, watch the wrap up. That wrap up did really well, by the way. Thank you guys for supporting it and loving it. It got a ton of views in the first day and I was like, okay, so they like the wrap ups. <laughs> Next up, these two books were gifted to me from Stasia or at Reader C. And this is another loyal viewer. She's been here since the beginning. We love her. We love the bookstagram as well. And she has sent The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pon. And I'm going to put this in a reading vlog with uh, The Death of Vivek OG as well. And I'm looking for another book to add to that vlog that will probably make me cry. Chandler Ainsley did a video where she was like testing out, trying to see if really popular emotional books would make her cry. And I'm probably gonna copy her and do the same thing. So thanks for the inspo Chandler. But let me know down below if y'all have another book that would fit in with this and Vivek OG and possibly make me cry because that's what I'm looking for. Also, thank you, Stacia, for this one and for The Good Samaritan by John Mars. I actually read this one in a John Mars taste test reading vlog, which should be up now. I think it's the most recent video that I have posted, so I will link it again above and below. Please go watch that. It was super fun to make, and there's a lot of like personal life vlog footage if you just wanna get to know me and my family a little bit more. And spoiler alert, I love this one, but still go watch the vlog to hear my full thoughts. And because I'm working on my John Mars ranking entire backlist video, I also picked up When You Disappeared by John Mars. This one and then one more are what I need to read in order to finish his entire backlist and rank every single one of his books for you guys. And this one follows a woman who wakes up and discovers that her husband is missing and she's frantically trying to find him. And then in alternating chapters, we get the husband's point of view and he's actually thriving alive. He staged his own disappearance because of some secret things that are going on in his marriage that the wife doesn't necessarily know about. But I think he's about to come back into her life. Yeah, he, it says, he can't hide forever, and when he reappears 25 years later, his wife will finally learn who he really is and wish she'd stayed in the dark. 
that sounds phenomenal. All right, we are down to the last couple books and both of these I just picked up at random half price books runs um, to treat myself because when it's my birthday month, that's what I do. So I got The Last Time I Saw You by Liv Constantine. This author duo is quite hit or miss for me. I hated The Wife Stalker, but The Last Mrs. Parrish is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. So I'm trying to see where this one will land. And then once I finish this and Liv Constantine's other book, then I can do a full ranking of Liv Constantine's thrillers. This one follows a woman who seemingly has it all. She is the that privileged suburban rich bitch that is the main character of basically all of Liv Constantine's thrillers and I love that type of character and all of a sudden her world is shaken by the death of her mother and there's suspicion that she was murdered and our main character ends up getting a text that's saying yes basically she was murdered and we're gonna come for everyone else in your life and you as well so she's trying to investigate and figure out who is sending these texts who killed her mom and what she's done to bring this upon herself and finally i picked up the hidden things by jamie mason this is a thriller that's supposed to be similar to 13 cameras which is a horror movie on netflix and it follows something that has been captured on like a home security camera and different things like in the background and what's actually happening in the forefront of the video affect different people. So I think it like gets released or goes viral online and then it affects all these different people's lives in different ways in like the suburban neighborhood and it just sounds so good. I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but I'm excited to get to it. So so those are all 40 books I had to talk to you guys about and haul for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please let me know down below about which reading vlogs or videos you would want to see from me regarding the books that I hauled in this video. And if you like this video, don't forget to actually like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's completely free and actually less than half of you guys that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So please do that. It would make me really happy and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.